Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, we're going to drill in and take a look at this 10-year yield and the impact it's having. Uh, the market got hit pretty good this last week, at least in several sectors. We'll look at that. Uh, so we'll look at that. We'll take a look at, uh, I'm going to look focus on the home builders, XHB, and three home building stocks. Uh, but we're going to start off here first with the side-by-side uh, -side view of the industrials, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100. Now, the Dow was down 1,162 points this last week. So pretty big downdraft, but, you know, it's just like it happened four other times this year. And three of those times, we had another week of follow-through to the downside and then didn't go anywhere, really. Uh, in September, really didn't get the, the follow-through at all in that move. So it'll be interesting to see what do we get this coming week. Okay, I think there's a little more things moving around right now. The S&P 500 closed almost below the prior week low, down 56.55. And by the way, you know, we continue to see tremendous divergence here on a weekly basis. Uh, the NASDAQ 100 just barely creeped into the positive territory. Uh, it was up uh, about 28 points at the close, so not a whole lot of progress there. And it has not taken out that July high yet, like the S&P 500 and the, and the uh, Dow Industrials have. So I want to go back, and what I want to do is take a look at this 10-year yield. So look what it's done since the Federal Reserve cut interest rates. On September 18th, they cut the federal funds rate by 50 basis points. And the 10-year yield the day before had a low of 3.60%. It closed on Friday at 4.23%. That's how you read that, 4.23%. Pretty dramatic move since September 18th. I mean, and this is what's affecting a lot of different things. And, you know, I've got you know the, the thumbnail on the video uh, this week has this picture, which I came across on, it was uh, tweeted by the Daily Shot, uh, I think it was Wednesday or Thursday morning before the market opened. Okay, so the interest rate that they've got in here is very, very, it's not exact, but it's very close. It says 4.22% on the 10 year yield. This, the blue is inverted, the, the blue line or purple line, whatever you want to call that, I'm partially colorblind, is inverted. So as this goes down, that means interest rates are going up. And you can see here's the scale right here. The black line is the S&P 500, which is rising. Well, it has continued to rise as the 10-year yield has continued to rise. And you just wonder how much longer is that really going to occur? Okay, and that's why I think, you know, that this is raining on the parade a little bit here on the stock market and it started to have an effect this week. Um, what I want to do is take a look at, well, first of all, I just want to point out, look on the weekly chart over here. We're in a pretty good uh, downtrend, but we're getting a snapback. Now, the real question is, is this going to continue to push and come up here and take out the highs? I mean, you could draw a trend line across the highs here. I would say if it breaks that trend line, you know, we're in for some pretty big surges going on the 10 year yield. Here's the long term picture on the 10 year yield. And you could see the long term chart going back, you know, 20, 25 years, about 25 years, was broken to the upside here in 22. Okay. And now we've been kind of chopping around a little bit up low. And then we've been in a little bit of a downtrend since that peak right here in October of last year, 12 months ago. So now, where are we gonna go? Are we gonna take out that high? Are we gonna continue surging? We'll see. Kind of interesting. Um, what I wanna take a look at is what happened this last week. So when I look at this ETF dashboard, uh, this is what I go over with my members every week. You could see this week, I have 16 sectors up here. Only two were positive, 14 negative, quite a bit of a reverse from the prior week. And the most negative was home builders, down 7.2%. So they really, really hit this ETF hard. OK, 
Okay, and uh, you know, and, and you know, the the ten year yield has a direct impact on what's happening with the mortgage rates. So we'll see how much longer that's going to carry on. Um, let's see. Let me show you something else. So here's where I, I take a look at. I look at this every week also, just a side by side comparison of real estate, the uh, bank ETF, KBE, S&P Bank ETF, and then here's uh, the home builders ETF. You can see pretty big downdraft, big move. They were all down this week, but this was the biggest move to the downside. Okay, I want to what I want to do is let me just expand this out so you can take a look at what's going on with this XHB. It's clearly punched to new all-time highs. It's been doing that when it took out the, the highs of the uh, 2021. And when you go back and say, well, where was it in the, the prior cycle back before the great financial crisis? Well, XHB just started trading, at least the data I've got is back beginning of 06. And the real peak in the housing market, which I'll show you on a several housing stocks, was July of 05. Okay, so kind of interesting. We are well above that, of course. And then the real question is, when is this going to peak? You know, and and uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Let me go to one of the housing stocks. Actually, before I go there, I want to show you something else. Um, let me go here. Let me show you this. Okay, so this is from Yahoo Finance. This is what's in XHB. So you would think home builders, you know, they ought to have, you know, Toll Brothers, Pulte, whatever. No, at least not in the top 10. It's all really stocks related to furnishings of a home, material for building a home, that type of thing, but there's no Pulte, there's no, no Lennar, there's no Toll Brothers, at least in the top 10%, let's put it that way. Okay, so I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, and then when you drill in and take a look at um, the stocks, I'm gonna start off with uh, Toll Brothers, I believe. Yeah, I wanna start off with Toll Brothers, and I'm gonna just start here with this weekly chart. Okay, so Toll Brothers was down 6.6% this last week with the, with the, uh, the move down in, uh, with, you know, the home builders and, uh, and everything else this last week. Now, let's go back, let's take a look at all the way back to 2005 in the last cycle. What's interesting is, you know, the stock market you know, prior to the great financial crisis of 07, 08, 09, the stock market peaked in October of 2007. When did the home builders peak? July of 2005. Look at the count, the scale right down here. July of 2005. That's when they peaked. Two years and two to three months ahead of the stock market. Kind of interesting. Okay, so now when I take a look at, at Toll Brothers, what are we looking at coming off that 2020 low? I'm looking at a five-wave move, but I don't think the five-wave move is complete yet. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking at some corrective move going on or about to begin. I think it may have started this last week because I think we had a little ending diagonal pattern here in the, uh, in the wave structure right here. Okay, overlapping, finishing off this uh, the fifth intermediate wave of this third primary wave. And so, yes, I do believe we are going to get some corrective activity and it may pull the uh, Toll Brothers all the way back to 108. Doesn't have to go that low. You know, you typically target into this zone. So we'll see what it does. We'll see what kind of pattern materializes in here, as you know. You know, uh, when you get uh, a wave four like this, that you could be sideways when you've had this one as a deep, sharp pullback, it can be a number of different patterns. OK, so we'll just watch to see what starts to pull out. But I do think over the next couple of months, I am looking for some corrective activity. But then I think we have one more leg up. And then it's just a matter of when is that last leg, that fifth wave peak? 
Okay, so going to be really, really interesting watching the home builders, watching real estate ahead of the stock market. Okay, so this is where we sit with the uh, Toll Brothers. Now, I'm going to go back to the moving average view. It's what I call it. And I'm going to pull up, uh, let's see, Lennar. Uh, and uh, uh, they all have the same Elliott Wave type pattern in here. So I'm not going to dive into the Elliott Wave pattern. But I just want to show you what they're doing. So Lennar was down a little bit more, uh, down 8.3%. But when you look back and scan and say, okay, what was going on with it? When did it peak? Right here, July of 2005. Okay, And they all bottomed in October. Well, this one, this is interesting. Most of them were bottoming not till 2011. Okay. But, uh, you know, Lennar bottomed here in November of 2008 ahead of the, the stock market. I actually hadn't uh, paid attention to that before or hadn't looked at that before. So interesting picture, very, very similar to what's going on with Toll Brothers. Yeah, we have divergence on a weekly perspective with this last little leg up in here. You're seeing it on all the indicators. So I think it's very vulnerable. And of course, we got a pretty hard down this last week. And then the last one we'll take a look at is Pulte, PHM, down 11.1%. So it was the worst performer of the three I'm looking at. And yeah, the divergences are there. Uh, let me scan back here to uh, 2005. Let me just zoom in a little bit more. So here's here's. June actually, June of 2000, June now is July, July of 2005. And then see where I was talking about here, September, October 2011 when it bottomed. Okay, so kind of interesting. They didn't all uh, delay that long, but I think most of them did. So first things first, number one, you know, I think we're into getting a corrective pattern. And then number two, where does the final wave structure peak? And uh, and then you just watch for a rollover to confirm that it is truly peaked. And then we start to watch the market very, very close. OK, that's it for this weekend. If you felt like the video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, hit that little subscriber button. If you'd like more of this information, head on over to joehenches.net. Everyone have a great week. It's going to be an interesting week with five of the seven Magnificent Seven reporting. We're about to get the election a week from Tuesday. And I think we got I think we got a jobs report on Friday. I should have anyway, first Friday of the month. All right, everyone, have a great week. Talk to you on the next video.